after God sent the first nine plagues on the Egyptians, the crops had been destroyed, most of the livestock, the animals were dead, and this means you know they didn't have any food and they were and the Egyptians were getting really sick and hungry and then they were suffering but Pharaoh still would not have let the Israelite people go free he did not want them to go free he wanted to keep them as his slaves and God decided to bring one more plague on Egypt since all that did not work. But God knew it wouldn't work because he had a plan. And this was his plan. This plague would be so great that the Pharaoh would demand that the Israelites leave Egypt. He would say, go. God, get out of here. God was going to put the, to death the firstborn of man and animal in all the land of Egypt. Now, God knew which one was the firstborn of each family and each animal. And he knew it, and he was going to allow them to die because that would be very hurtful to the Egyptians. It would hurt them so bad, they would just want them to get out. And so, God planned a way to save the Israelites by doing this. This is the rest of the story. First, God told Moses to have each Israelite family select a perfect lamb from their herd. The lamb had to be without blemish. That means it had to be a perfect color and no marks on the skin and no marks on, the, um, on its coat. It had to be like a pet even it had even its temperament had to be perfect and on the 14th of the day of the month they must kill it kill the lamb take its blood and put it on the door frame there must be blood on every door then roast the lamb and eat it and eat it fast and be ready to travel and you won't even have time to raise your bread you're going to travel with unleavened bread and that shows that you left Egypt quickly. It is my Passover. Israel did not did as they were told. That night came and a great cry came up from all over Egypt. In every house the oldest son died. But Israel had the lamb's blood on their doors. The destroying angel passed over them. Pharaoh woke up that night and found his own son dead. All of Egypt was crying. In every house, someone had died. Pharaoh called Moses, Take Israel and get away from me and my people. Take everything you have and be gone. Before they left Egypt, they asked the Egyptians for gold and clothing and things of value. And the Egyptians gave it to them. God also wanted the gold and the precious stones and the diamonds and and all the jewelry so he could they could use it when they build the tabernacle they can use it for for what the items that he wants inside the tabernacle for the ark of the covenant and and everything that was to be built for his house god also at this time established the days of unleavened bread this is when the children left egypt this began their deliverance from that God delivered them from Egypt, delivered them from their troubles. And this is what he wants us to remember. This is the night to be much observed. We, the first night to, uh, of the unleavened bread, when they called the night to be much observed. And... Israel left Egypt with their flocks and their herds, with their silver, golden clothing, and they were off. And where were they going? Well, they didn't know. This great nation travels south. Oh, he sent, God sent a pillar of fire to lead the way. And 
So they said, the God of heaven and earth goes before us. He's going to be a pillar of fire during the night, which it was nighttime then, night to be much observed. And then, during the day, he, God would send a pillar of cloud. And that would lead him during the day. They didn't know where they were going, but God was leading them. But Pharaoh de decided he was going to go after them. He was sorry he let them go. He wanted to kill them all. He wanted them to be his slaves again. He led his army after these, after the um, Israelites, and they were vicious. They wanted to get them. When Pharaoh's army attempted to follow the Israelites, they were hiding. They were, and then, all of a sudden, they showed their faces to the Israelites who were near the Red Sea. And there was no place to go. So Israel faced the Red Sea. Mountains were on each side. And Pharaoh and his army were close behind. Trapped between the army and the Red Sea, Israel cried out. Moses said, the Lord will fight out, fight for you. Don't worry, trust in the Lord. And he lifted his staff over the sea. <clears throat> You'll never see these Egyptians again. All night, an east wind blew, the wind water split in two, and the sea became dry. The Israelites were able to crossed on the dry ground through the sea all their animals their children all the wheels on their carts that they were pulling and everybody got through the water formed two walls <clears throat> and everybody was able to get through the egyptians chased after them but the wheels fell off their chariots because they got stuck. All of a sudden, the, it became muddy water, and they got stuck, and they couldn't go. The wheels fell off. The horses sank into the sea, and they tried to run. Just then, Moses lifted his staff again. The sea returned, and Egypt, all the Egyptians drowned. And that was it. God delivered them. He saved them from Egypt. And then we're going to talk about the things we need to remember from this whole story. God told Moses to tell the people of Israel, Remember this day in which you went out of Egypt. Remember when I took you out of this place of slavery by the strength of the Lord's hand. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. You shall not be afraid. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great miracles which your eyes saw, the plagues, and having them go out of Egypt by parting the Red Sea. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. So the days of unleavened bread, you shall eat no leavened bread. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it. Instead, this is the bread of affliction. This is how we remember the Israelites in slavery and how God took them out of their affliction, out of their slavery. So what does God want us to remember? And not to forget, number one, he wants us to remember and think about how sin is breaking the commandments. Sin causes us and other people to be hurt and sad, just like the Egyptians hurt God's people. He wants us to remember that when we are feeling bad or when things go wrong or other people treat us bad, that he will take care of things for us. If we try to keep his commandments and have patience and faith, God will get us out of our troubles. Number two, he wants us to remember all the times that he does save us uh, and our family from getting hurt or when we are going through troubled times and not to forget the times that he 
saves us because we can look back at that like miracles in our life and that helps us to depend on him and trust him even more he number three he wants us to follow him when we live his way of life we follow him god sent the pillar of fire and the cloud and the for the israelites to follow but today christ is with us and he will lead the way as we live his way of life sometimes when we do something wrong we cannot get off the wrong get off his path and go down a wrong path and we get lost and we call out for God to save us he will send his light to get back on his path he says that his law is our light when we follow his law it's like following the light to go to the right path number four he wants us to remember that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who died for our sins and delivers us from our problems we need to ask our Savior, Christ, Jesus Christ, to save us and deliver us from our problems just like the Israelites did. When the disciples were afraid, they cried out for his help, and he saved them. But he says that they should have had more faith. When we depend on him, we need to depend on him with faith. Number five, wants us to look to him when we need help so that other people will know the true God that helps us. So many people are hurting in this world and don't know who to turn to. They don't know the true God, but by our example, they can get to know the true God and maybe turn to him to ask him for help.